Today here on the bench, a Heathkit Signal Tracer Model IT12, which has never been used and we need to take it back into service. Welcome to TRX Bench. Okay, and let's right go here into the video. So, you see, uh, this is uh, really um, IT12 in uh, a very good uh, condition, and I was able to acquire it uh, because uh, the owner told me it uh, doesn't work, so it is without function, and he uh, did this uh, kit. Uh, I don't know, 30 years ago and uh, he tried it out and uh, it doesn't work. So he put it by side and uh, over the decades he uh, has forgotten that uh, it is uh, somewhere uh, in his uh, shelves and uh, now he said, okay, uh, really I don't need it any longer and I was not uh, able to find the problem when uh, I built uh, this signal tracer and uh, therefore uh, he sold it and uh, now we have it and that means this uh, this uh, model or this uh, device uh, seems to have uh, complete new valves and uh, you 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 see that uh, yeah the shape uh, is uh, like uh, it comes from factory so I mean here we uh, have some uh, scratches maybe from the shelf uh, I don't know but uh, anyways um, let's test it out so let's uh, test it uh, into uh, let's take it into service and let's see if it works um, and uh, you all may know that uh, if you have a product like this you have to be very very careful because you really can destroy uh, the complete unit you really can blow it if you simply uh, plug it into your main socket and uh, switch it on so that is uh, really what you never should do so we really have uh, to take some uh, precautions to uh, take it really um, carefully back into service and let's see if uh, it works or not and of course we uh, have to give it uh, a full inspection because it uh, was a kit so it has been built so uh, I have no clue um, what uh, the workmanship um, is so I have not uh, had it open but um, well so let's very very carefully start our testing here okay and uh, this here is the US model so that means uh, it uh, runs with uh, 117 uh, volt uh, which is uh, no problem uh, because we have uh, adapters like uh, this here so you can uh, get it for very little money uh, on the internet and uh, you can easily uh, plug your um, US uh, uh, socket here to a European one which uh, then uh, will it make uh, what 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 then make uh, it uh, possible to operate this unit on a European mains uh, network so that is not a problem but uh, for our first step of course we will uh, put it um, to our isolation transformer and uh, we will uh, put some uh, current limiting uh, bulbs in front of it so let's uh, prepare here our test setup and then let's uh, start the unit okay and uh, of course we are using here our uh, bulbs to uh, be able to take uh, our signal tracer uh, safely back into a service um, if uh, you don't know how uh, it works so the bulbs are limiting uh, the current and uh, if there is a short inside our unit then um, all 
uh, the bulbs will light up and uh, will protect uh, our circuit so it is like uh, I can uh, shortly uh, demonstrate it so you see I have here my Bose uh, wires which uh, will supply here our unit with uh, 117 volt uh, AC and uh, if there would be a short inside our circuit we would not get uh, a problem as you know our bulbs here jumping in and uh, they will limit it uh, our current through the unit uh, the voltage drop will at our bulbs and uh, will uh, therefore um, really protect uh, our whatever is uh, shorted out here in uh, our signal tracer maybe a trafo a transformer or such and uh, therefore this is always a good idea if you want to know a bit more about it uh, simply watch my video number 48 um, there I explain um, a little bit uh, more how it works sorry it is video 43 um, right it is video 43 where uh, I explained a little bit about how it works here with uh, our protection circuit and of course uh, we have here uh, our isolation uh, transformer over there and uh, so we can uh, do our first steps okay so it is uh, connected uh, this way here all right um, so we have uh, our bulbs in uh, between now uh, I can uh, switch on the unit but our transformer our isolating uh, transformer is um, turned down so we uh, do not have a voltage here so we can uh, see it here on uh, our power analyzer and uh, we can uh, see that uh, there is no amps and uh, no watts and you see no voltage and when I now start here cranking up uh, our voltage so you uh, directly see yeah something is obviously uh, happening so 6 watt and uh, uh, 90 milliamps it is dropping because of course uh, 60 volt is uh, definitely too low uh, so that is uh, only the procedure more uh, important uh, is of course uh, let me see if I can bring it here a little bit uh, more uh, together of course uh, we are interested in uh, our um, in uh, our magic eye is it working or not so that will be an indication and now I will go ahead with cranking up uh, here our voltage and let's see oh I already hear it uh, humming so that is interesting because remember um, the uh, fault description was that uh, it doesn't work Okay, so let me uh, crank it uh, slowly up and we watch uh, our bulbs here because if there is something wrong, they will light up. And you hear we have already hum and it is really coming here from the unit. So that uh, is promising. Okay, so let me go and you see everything is fine, no problem. And um, uh, by the way, the unit is rated with a maximum uh, 25 uh, watt. So that is uh, always uh, important to observe. Um, and uh, uh, for the moment in time, you see uh, we have uh, 11 watt at uh, 87 uh, volt. And uh, I will crank it up to, yeah, let me say, to 120 as long nothing uh, goes wrong here but uh, let's have here a look to the unit so we see we have already here our uh, magic eye coming up 
but we have not yet uh, reached uh, our target uh, voltage and uh, as I said let me go up to 120 uh, volt so yeah that is that is uh, just fine here so you see we are uh, drawing here 180 milliamps at uh, 19 uh, watt and uh, yeah what uh, we can hear is a humming in uh, the speaker and uh, we see here our uh, magic eye and uh, it is already shining uh, very nicely so uh, that is uh, promising uh, too so uh, no problem uh, whatsoever so let's see uh, what we uh, have here and <laughs> it is it is working it is re it is really working and uh, yeah I don't know uh, what's really going on because uh, the unit was uh, sold as uh, no function uh, at all so I'm wondering uh, what's really uh, going on so all our uh, parameters are still good so uh, 20 watt at uh, uh, 180 milliamps um, 120 volt and uh, I'm sure our voltage here at the input is lower than 120 remember so we definitely have a voltage drop here at uh, our bulbs um, but uh, we leave it uh, in uh, this configuration because whatever happens this will protect our cir circuit here okay so <laughs> that is really funny and I can switch it to RF okay so that is all working fine and I can hear yeah short uh, here our probe and now uh, the hum is gone which is uh, good uh, as well all right so um, what does that mean um, we really have uh, let me switch it off because uh, we have not uh, tested our um, electrolytic capacitors so we really do not nothing um, so we we have to open the unit and uh, we uh, have it we we have uh, we we need to give it a, a full inspection because there must be a reason why uh, the pre-owner uh, told me that uh, the unit is not working and uh, yeah i carried it uh, by car here uh, into my uh, lab and uh, so that is all what i did um Okay, so let's uh, open uh, the unit. Let's see what's really going on. So there may some really nasty uh, components uh, inside, especially capacitors. And that is what we need to check um, before we go ahead. Okay, so that is uh, relatively easy. So we only have uh, to take off here uh, this Bose screws and then um, according uh, the assembly uh, instruction we should be able to uh, take off here um, our housing and we should have directly access to our unit and uh, so uh, it is uh, let me get it through here okay and uh, remember so uh, we have here a capacitor so that is what I directly see and uh, this capacitor capacitor can potentially still uh, charged so be careful uh, maybe we have uh, not maybe we have to check it first and then uh, we can ahead but anyways here on the first look it uh, really looks like uh, new so really really nice but uh, yeah we uh, give it a full inspection okay and uh, as already said uh, so we need to make sure that uh, there is uh, no load uh, anymore 
Uh, so ground uh, is uh, our chassis and uh, as uh, we discussed before so this is uh, our electrolytic uh, capacitor and uh, yeah let's see if there is a load and yeah 5 uh, volt so that is not uh, dangerous here we have obviously uh, also 5 uh, volt so there is a little rest uh, load um, but uh, that is uh, not very um, dangerous so I will simply uh, connect it here uh, to ground which means I'm able to discharge it and uh, now let's uh, test it again and uh, so that is uh, nothing at all so that means the load uh, is gone and uh, well um, the very first uh, what we should do is uh, testing um, our uh, electrolytic uh, capacitor because I'm not entirely uh, sure but uh, this unit uh, must be uh, from the late uh, 60s or the early 70s so let's assume it is uh, from 1970 uh, so we really have here a vintage uh, unit and even uh, it has never been uh, used because uh, our owner thought uh, there uh, is a problem uh, with the unit um, and he found it uh, not working asked after assembling it um, we have to expect that uh, there um, may be uh, a problem here with uh, electrolytic capacitors because capacitors uh, 40 years or older are always a problem I mean um, this capacitor never uh, get uh, heat I mean you see here a tube is uh, very close to uh, the capacitor and that means uh, if this unit is running and uh, believe me in workshops this unit uh, were running the whole day uh, the whole week the whole month the whole year and uh, after I don't know 10 years or so you definitely uh, have uh, problems here with um, the electrolytic capacitors uh, but I mean, um, this has um, never been used and uh, I can believe it because it really looks um, never touched. Uh, so maybe this is fine, but uh, we have to test it and let, uh, let us start there. And then uh, we look after uh, a problem because uh, our owner told us that pre-owner told us it uh, will not work and the question is why so what uh, really is the problem okay while our um, capacitor tester is uh, calibrating we uh, can uh, take here our magic eye uh, out uh, of the way so that will make it uh, easier to uh, get uh, access here to our electrolytic capacitor now I believe we uh, yeah so now we have a much uh, better uh, overview and uh, we can check out here our circuit a little bit and uh, we can test here our uh, electrolytic capacitor well meanwhile we can uh, have here a first uh, look on our tube uh, sockets and uh, what have we uh, so you can uh, see here there is obviously a coupling capacitor um, which mm, needs to be tested or 
we have uh, to swap it out but uh, it does not look like uh, one of these uh, wax uh, capacitors which uh, has been used uh, but uh, maybe in the 70s uh, they already um, didn't use uh, wax uh, capacitors so that looks like a much more uh, modern type and uh, yeah then uh, we have here our carbon uh, resistors and uh, of course we have uh, to test uh, these resistors because uh, maybe they uh, moved out uh, of tolerance so that is an important uh, step as well and uh, of course uh, we uh, have to test um, here this uh, capacitors because there are some coupling uh, capacitors as well um, and having here a look onto the uh, schematic uh, you can easily see here uh, our transformer so that is uh, the mains uh, transformer for 170 volt AC and uh, then we have here a silicon um, rectifier diode so that is not a tube any longer so that is already a silicon uh, diode and then we have here one two uh, C7 and I've seen it is a, a triple package um, capacitor uh, Ah, C7, uh, oops, you can't uh, see it. And uh, we have here our bypass capacitor of uh, 20 microfarad, I believe. So that is a common uh, value for uh, a bypass uh, capacitor here at our uh, audio amplifier. So um, yeah, we have this both of 50 microfarad and then the uh, 20 um, microfarad in uh, one package. And of course, uh, this here is um, a critical uh, coupling capacitor because this is really uh, connected here to the grip of a grid of our uh, tube here, our amplifier, audio amplifier tube, and uh, you see this uh, is uh, connected here at uh, the anode of uh, our double uh, triode tube so two tube tubes in uh, one uh, package it is a 12 AX7 uh, and uh, the 12 is already an indication for uh, the heating uh, voltage so uh, it is uh, working with uh, 12 uh, volt so as our um, amplifier audio amplifier as well so it is a 12 ca5 uh, and uh, our magic eye is uh, 1629 and that is as far so that is v3 and uh, we see it here at our power supply so this here is uh, for our tubes and uh, the V3 is then of course also a 12.6 um, uh, 12 uh, heating volt heating system all right and yeah let's uh, start um, with uh, our electrolytic capacitors and of course here uh, our uh, coupling uh, capacitors I mean these coupling capacitors are really really uh, important as if uh, these capacitors are uh, leaking current DC current then uh, we uh, never would uh, get here zero volt at uh, the grid it is a G1 of uh, our uh, final tube uh, because we always uh, would get a leakage of uh, the supply voltage for this uh, portion of uh, our uh, double packet 
you see 76 uh, volt DC and uh, this would directly get to the grid here of uh, our amplifier uh, tube and uh, that uh, means uh, this uh, this uh, tube would uh, get out uh, of its uh, its uh, working uh, point and uh, the tube would uh, then really draw a uh, heavy current and therefore yeah it is important that uh, our coupling uh, capacitors are not leaking a bit so that uh, is really crucial to check and of course we are testing for ESR and uh, therefore I put one uh, clip here to ground uh, maybe I can uh, take ground uh, here uh, better would be really here at uh, the ground point and um, we know uh, our uh, capacitor is um, 50 microfarad and it has 150 volt and uh, according to our list so we uh, have to take here um, let me see our 47 and uh, uh, let me check here uh, with uh, 100 uh, volt we should not go over uh, 0 0.7 um, ohm and uh, with 250 0 0.8 so we are in between so maybe 0 0.75 so as long we are below 0 0.7 uh, the ears are is uh, just uh, fine and uh, we can uh, take here uh, our reading and what we uh, can see here our first uh, 50 microfarad is uh, 338 milliohm so we are far below uh, uh, 0.7 uh, ohm and that means this portion is really fine Okay, and uh, let's go to the second uh, capacitor in this uh, package. It is again a 50 microfarad, 150 volt, and uh, you already see the reading, so we are um, even lower, so uh, 0 0.293, which uh, is which is really fine. It uh, looks like uh, that uh, this capacitor is as new. And now um, our third uh, part, uh, which is, let me double check in the schematic, it is uh, our 20 microfarad type and it is 25 volt. So that uh, means um, we should not exceed 2.1 ohm and yeah you see it is 2.1 let me double check um, it is 2.1 yeah, you see it is moving and jumping around here a little bit yeah so it is uh, within its uh, specs but maybe uh, we need uh, to support it a little bit um, we will uh, see later I mean uh, as I said this is only the bypass uh, capacitor for our final audio uh, amplifier and um, just yeah let's see what we need to do but uh, other than that uh, it really looks uh, fine so uh, really I would not expect uh, that uh, this uh, capacitor is really doing any trouble here 
in uh, our circuit. Okay, next step uh, will be, I mean, you, you know, uh, obviously, that uh, we can't check uh, for capac capacitance as uh, therefore we uh, need to have uh, the capacitor taken out or at least uh, we have to take off all uh, the wiring because otherwise we are not able to test for C. Uh, but um, I just uh, want to check in the next uh, step. I just uh, want to check here uh, the wiring and uh, I just want to check here our resistors. Um, so I try to check uh, the values of the resistors and yeah, this here is uh, our uh, final uh, amplifier and so I just go through our uh, circuit and uh, yeah, let me uh, get back uh, if uh, I have maybe a finding or um, yeah with uh, our next steps I mean uh, we have to check uh, of course and that is what I already said this uh, coupling capacitor even it looks uh, a more uh, modern type but uh, uh, this is really really important um, and I believe if uh, this, uh, let me see if you can see it here. So uh, there you see the marking, so the white uh, bar, and uh, this may show uh, the foil end uh, of uh, our capacitor. And if it is really indicating the foil end, I mean we have to check it out, but if it is indicating the foil end then this uh, capacitor is uh, the wrong way around. So you may know that uh, the foil end uh, always have to go to the lower impedance and of course the output uh, of uh, our um, pre-stage here is uh, lower impedance than the input of uh, our final audio amplifier so that is a higher impedance and according uh, to the law that always uh, our uh, foil end of a capacitor has to go to the lower impedance this uh, is wrong so it uh, needs uh, to get flipped over and if I have it uh, out anyways because I have to test it uh, I would replace it uh, anyways with uh, a newer uh, capacitors uh, just in case because yeah we need a very good uh, DC blogger over there. Okay and I've uh, taken uh, my time and I inspected uh, the circuit very very carefully and uh, see what uh, we found. So have a look. I go as close as I can here to uh, this point and what you see is that uh, this has never been soldered here to the socket, this little wire. And uh, when we go here into uh, our schematic we are here, you may uh, see it, at our um, uh, audio uh, output uh, tube. So this is the audio amplifier, right? And when we go here into uh, our schematic, you see that exactly this point here, so this is uh, pin uh, 1, so that is the cathode of uh, our um, amplifier tube and you see this is uh, pin uh, 1 so let me go uh, closer so this is pin 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, so 3 and 4 is uh, our heating system and uh, you see this is here definitely uh, pin 1 and pin 1 is a cathode and that has not been soldered so this uh, solder point joint is uh, missing and uh, of course if uh, 
our pin 1 is not connected here to our tube, that is uh, clearly reason why uh, the uh, complete system uh, won't uh, work. So that uh, can already be the reason uh, why uh, the system uh, wasn't uh, working and uh, I mean you you clearly see uh, this is a, a brand new uh, contact here from uh, our tube socket right so you easily can uh, see that uh, never a solder has been on that uh, contact here so and uh, you see I can uh, move it here uh, up and down and uh, if uh, there was no contact then of course the system uh, was not uh, functioning so that is uh, definitely the uh, explanation for uh, what uh, the owner was uh, telling me uh, this system is not working so that is uh, most likely the reason and uh, well while I was uh, carrying uh, the unit of course uh, it uh, got uh, shaked here a little bit and uh, it might uh, got uh, contact so that uh, uh, the system was working here in our first test right okay so that means of course we have to solder it down so that we have a proper connection um, but I have another nice uh, finding so let me flip here the unit around and uh, as I told you uh, I just uh, wanted to check uh, the resistors and that is what uh, I uh, did and uh, this here is a 68k um, resistor and uh, we know this uh, resistors um, has uh, here a silver ring which uh, means uh, 10% uh, tolerance and well um, so maximum 68k uh, plus 10% uh, would be 74.8k uh, and uh, when I test it here so you see this is uh, definitely out uh, of tolerance so uh, this uh, resistor went too high over the years so what we need uh, to do is we uh, have to replace this uh, resistor for sure and uh, of course uh, we I have to check here if uh, it is the right way around so I will take this out as well and uh, yeah, I've taken out here my um, tube and uh, what you can see here so um, I mean this uh, does not uh, necessarily mean um, anything but uh, as these uh, tube sockets are known for uh, making a trouble we really have to check this uh, tube socket or maybe it is already uh, the best idea to simply replace it uh, I have to overthink uh, it and I am a little bit unhappy here with uh, the ground uh, connections because this is here uh, you can't see it uh, this is here our main ground all right so um, you see this here is uh, directly our wiring here out of uh, our transformer and uh, so this is ground all right and then uh, you see uh, we have uh, here uh, uh, can you can you see it or not I don't know let me check if I can um, show it any better uh, so we definitely have here uh, a ground point uh, as well you can see uh, maybe uh, you can see it here I mean we have here all the ground leads and then uh, it is here connected to, to ground and uh, here as well 
you see uh, ground is tied here to this point so we have here different uh, ground points and uh, that is uh, never a real good idea I have to check if we can leave that so uh, we need uh, to give uh, the circuit a uh, better uh, or a more complete uh, testing but here uh, for the first step um, we uh, need uh, to keep it in mind that uh, maybe that is uh, not the best uh, idea and I go ahead now with replacing the resistor and of course here our um, our capacitor here okay so uh, we did here some modifications and uh, first of all you remember that uh, we had here an open uh, connection and I have here now a nice solder point on our cathode of our audio amplifier and uh, of course I have uh, changed here our capacitor to a modern uh, one um, and it is uh, even a higher uh, DC voltage uh, what uh, this uh, capacitor, capacitor can take um, even uh, it is not necessary because we have here maximum I believe uh, 80, 80 volts or such um, so that is now new and it is now the right way round so we have our foil and here at uh, this uh, side and uh, it is now pointing here to the lower impedance side which uh, is of course right um, and uh, I've tested it so I didn't uh, rely here only on uh, the little marking here so I really uh, tested it and uh, sure this marking is really foil end so that is fine by now then uh, uh, what had we had we uh, else so I replaced here um, our resistor which uh, was um, gone out uh, of tolerance so that is uh, new and I found here this um, ground um, this uh, ground uh, point here was completely loose uh, due to the fact that uh, it was not really screwed here uh, to uh, the uh, chassis and that means uh, this was wiggling around and um, yeah as we already discussed um, I'm not really happy with uh, the ground um, wiring here but uh, we uh, will check it um, I will uh, first now uh, replace back here uh, our magic eye and uh, if that uh, is back in and, and, I, and, and I, I have done here some uh, solder points where I thought hmm, maybe uh, it is good to reflow it so uh, that is uh, what I've done um, now uh, yeah as I said let me um, put back here our magic eye to the unit and uh, then we can uh, do a performance uh, test I mean you know um, it is uh, always uh, important to have here a high uh, gain so a very high amplification so that is really uh, important if you are probing in our RF uh, circuits um, because remember you may have a very tiny tiny uh, signals and uh, to hear this uh, tiny signals rectified here uh, by our uh, crystal diode uh, if it is uh, switched to RF right then uh, the little um, diode here inside will rectify it and uh, rectify it means in uh, this regard it is uh, a demo demodulator and uh, you will then have your audio which uh, is on your RF signal and it is always in an RF circuit very tiny and therefore you really need a huge uh, gain and that is the reason why we have here our two uh, tubes um, connected in cascode uh, 
um, configuration or CAS code. I, I do not really how to pronounce it. Uh, it simply means that uh, these uh, both tubes are uh, tubes are switched uh, behind each other, and um, really brings up a high gain to uh, our uh, final stage. And uh, yeah, therefore um, we uh, really need to check uh, the performance. That means um, for me it is always uh, an indication for quality or for fully working or whatever you uh, want to call it if uh, we can minimum um, probe a signal at uh, minus 40 dBm or even lower because that is already a real tiny tiny signal and that means you can feed uh, your uh, receiver for instance with a, a very low signal or for uh, antenna input minus 40 dBm is not low uh, so that is already very high so it is uh, S9 plus 30 32 dB I believe if I'm uh, did the mass right in my in my head so that is already a very high signal uh, at the antenna input but uh, for a probe it is not really uh, a big signal so therefore uh, we like to be able to probe already at our antenna input a signal of let me say minus uh, 40 dBm right and uh, then we can uh, follow uh, along in the circuit and go uh, step by step and then we can uh, determine if our circuit is uh, amplifying the signal or not so we can really go stage by stage and therefore that uh, is really an indication for a performance of a signal tracer if uh, the signal tracer is even possible is even able to pick a very little um, RF signal and can demodulate it and uh, can really amplify it. And secondly, to that is that uh, um, a signal tracer like uh, this is able not only, let me say, a uh, short wave. Uh, signals which is maximum uh, at uh, 30 megahertz so it is uh, interesting or it is for me uh, important to be able to pick even 50 or 145 or maybe 430 megahertz uh, signals I mean you know that uh, this uh, signal tracers were never um, developed for taking uh, signals uh, in, in, in the 400 uh, something megahertz area and not even for um, the 2 meter band 140 or so. Um, so, you know, in, in the past um, it was uh, a matter of fact that uh, these um, signal tracers are already struggling with, uh, let me say, um, 100 uh, megahertz or uh, so in the FM radio for FM radio stations which are around 195 uh, up to 100 115 uh, megahertz so it was a matter of fact that um, you know uh, signal tracers like this was failing and so it is really um, indication of performance if you can really pick a very tiny signal right and additional to that a very high frequency and that will be our performance test so let me uh, reassemble it let's see if uh, the basic basic functions are given and then we go and pick really tiny signals to see how this unit works all right so our magic eye is installed back here into the unit and uh, well here it looks pretty nice now uh, we have to check if uh, we need to adapt it uh, a little bit okay so then let's uh, try to switch uh, the unit on I see that uh, the unit is pulling current so ah and our 
magic eye is uh, coming up very nice so uh, of course uh, I have here shorted out our probe and now our first test so no crackling no hissing only a little bit in the background so let me see if uh, I take the ground and so that is uh, obviously working um, as far as I can see it we need to adjust here our tube just a little bit uh, to have it uh, more or less here in uh, the middle I don't know if that is now fine maybe um, I have to check it and let's see uh, yeah so magic eye is uh, working as well as uh, you may see and it is uh, really nice and uh, bright and uh, by the by the way uh, I have of course tested um, all the tubes uh, with uh, my uh, tube tester so here for uh, instance uh, I have here my test cards for the 12AX7 and uh, I can tell you that uh, all our tubes here inside our unit are showing up 100% so all that is again an indication that uh, we really uh, have uh, another used uh, unit so uh, that uh, all makes sense so all uh, tubes are really really uh, in a good uh, condition according to my tube tester okay so uh, that all seems uh, to be really uh, good and uh, I, I really uh, can yeah so that is uh, all just uh, fine and uh, even on RF uh, there is only a little humming here uh, in the background and uh, that is clear because our housing is not uh, on and uh, don't forget we have really here a circuit with, with a very very high gain and uh, thus it is clear that there is a bit uh, humming uh, on uh, our position on audio it is uh, dead quiet and let me check here uh, our tube for microphonic no so uh, our tube is uh, just fine no uh, microphonic uh, effects and uh, you really hear it is uh, nice and uh, quiet so another test uh, what uh, we want to do is uh, for the moment in time our um, noise function is uh, switched off by the way I can switch off here my speaker and uh, you may hear that uh, it is uh, easily uh, working okay uh, what uh, I just uh, wanted to, to know is if uh, we <clears throat> get our um, approximately 90 or 100 volt uh, to our probe for the noise or for the crackling uh, test so therefore we uh, have 100 volt uh, DC at uh, uh, our probe and that is what I want to test as well okay and I've prepared here my uh, test uh, setup so now um, our noise uh, is off noise function is off and I read uh, I read 3 volt um, so maybe there uh, is uh, the switch uh, I have cleaned uh, the switch then maybe there is still a little bit uh, of uh, our uh, dioxide um, here my good uh, contact uh, 60 uh, maybe that uh, there is still a little bit uh, but anyways uh, so let me switch now uh, the noise function on and you see uh, I really have 180 volt and uh, that is used 
uh, for our crackling uh, test so if you have a noisy component or so that uh, you can uh, test it here with uh, this uh, feature so you see that uh, is working as well and um, even if it is 100 volt it is uh, not really dangerous uh, to your life because the current is limit limited to one milliamp I, I believe so I I wouldn't touch it because 100 uh, volt is a lot but uh, you know um, it is uh, you you do not really need uh, to touch it you may uh, get uh, hurt a little bit but uh, it is not finally uh, dangerous to your life so we know that uh, function is given as well and uh, ah, what I may have uh, forgotten to tell you I've of course uh, tested here our uh, um, triple capacitor uh, package and uh, all uh, the uh, capacitor values I mean capacitance wise are in uh, the limits so they are a little bit about 50 milli um, a microfarad and uh, everything is fine so you really uh, see that uh, it is uh, another used uh, unit and uh, thus um, the restoration work was uh, not so heavy so we really uh, were able to get it back here into work with uh, just uh, some little steps Okay, now let me uh, put back the housing that we uh, have a bit better shielding and then let's uh, see um, the performance of uh, our unit here. Okay, and here is our unit uh, back in uh, the housing. And uh, yeah, maybe some of you have already or wondered already why uh, I was not uh, changing here uh, the power cord. Um, and uh, I have uh, three reasons uh, for that because first of all I uh, use uh, this adapter which uh, will um, adapt uh, from 230 volt uh, to 110, 115 um, and um, in this unit uh, there is no fuse installed um, uh, and I have not installed a fuse here uh, into uh, our unit uh, because uh, if I would have uh, uh, installed here uh, a fuse it should uh, it, it would have made uh, sense to use uh, a three uh, wire um, power cord uh, to connect ground here to the chassis to make it more safe but once again first of all I use this uh, converter here and uh, I have fused here in my little converter so uh, the unit is fused here by my little converter so that uh, is first secondly um, I will make clear to uh, everybody who is may use this unit um, that it is the Amer American uh, version and thus uh, it is a 110 uh, volt or 120 volt uh, version so that uh, is the second uh, reason and the third reason here is that uh, I use the unit in my internal isolation um, supply network so um, I use as well here my scope uh, is used with an isolation transformer so that is the reason why I can test on um, AC lines and so forth and so forth and uh, uh, therefore this will uh, get to the uh, isolation transformer installation as well and maybe uh, a last point for collector so I leave it uh, original but if you do not use it uh, on a uh, isolation transformer um, please do you uh, uh, own favor and replace this original cord uh, with a safety 3 wire cord and uh, put one 
so the ground lead here to the chassis that uh, if something happens here in the unit that uh, your fuse will uh, break so uh, that is very important only here in my installation I can take the risk because it is no risk and leave it uh, as it is so you really should know what you are doing because uh, it is not funny to get uh, an electric uh, chalk here by a unit which uh, is faulty okay but now let's go over to our performance test okay and uh, my probe uh, is set to RF and you can hear that uh, it is working all right I have here my Corx cable and uh, my uh, Corx is going here to my signal generator and uh, you see I really start off uh, in the 10 meter uh, band right and uh, uh, I've set it to minus 4 uh, dBm so that is not really uh, a very uh, low level so that is really a high level um, especially for receiver input so you really would uh, float um, a receiver with uh, such uh, a strong level and now uh, let me uh, here switch it uh, on so now uh, it is uh, on and uh, I'm here of course with my probe and I just want to take here yeah and you can clearly hear uh, how strong and nice I'm able to read here my um, my uh, 10 meter band and uh, even with a very low setting so that is uh, only on 10% uh, when I go down here to uh, the test point alright so that means uh, performance means let uh, me see how much I can uh, go down so let me go let's say to minus 10 and let's test it again and you still can hear it no problem whatsoever so let's go to 20 okay so now you uh, can recognize uh, the volume is going down but I can increase it here with my um, little uh, volume control and you hear it is uh, good again so let's go to let me say 30 and yeah volume is going down and I go higher with and you uh, still can hear it very very good I am at uh, oh, what is it 55 uh, percent and uh, we are at uh, minus 30 uh, dBm and you hear that uh, it is no problem to hear uh, our signal okay and um, I mean um, minus 30 uh, dBm is uh, already uh, yeah how can I say it or oh, it is still 7 uh, millivolt uh, if you like and uh, yeah let's uh, go down to minus 40 dBm and that is uh, already uh, a little challenge for uh, a signal tracer but let's see and aha so we can still hear it so I advanced here my volume and it's definitely no problem uh, to hear this uh, uh, signal and minus 40 is uh, only uh, 2 millivolts so let's see let me go down to 50 I mean that is really uh, a little bit low because uh, this is only 700 uh, micro uh, volt and I mean now I'm on 100% uh, here all right so you see it is uh, fully cranked uh, up but I'm still able 
to pick the signal. And to to be awesome, uh, to, to to be honest, I mean that is awesome. So that is really a great perform performance. Well, let me see minus fifty five, and you still can hear minus fifty five. Awesome. Minus 60? No, I don't believe that we can hear that. Nah, nah, maybe a little bit in the background, but nah, no. But uh, minus uh, 55, we can hear minus 55. And uh, that uh, is 447, uh, sorry, it is uh, 398 uh, microvolt. So that is really low. So that performance is great uh, as uh, we uh, talk about um, uh, sensitivity. So uh, it is really uh, sensitive here, uh, our tracer. And uh, that is uh, what I meant uh, with uh, performance. But now let's uh, start to do here our trick a little bit different. So let me go up to, let me say, 50 uh, megahertz, and of course we uh, change it to, to AM 50%. And let me go here to, I don't know, uh, let's start with uh, minus uh, 20. Uh, can we hear this signal? And we can easily, no problem. So let's go uh, back to our minus 50 because we know, okay, we have to advance our volume and still we can without a problem. Okay, so let's go into the two meter band and uh, again, uh, let's switch uh, to AM and um, let's go here to minus 20 dBm. Let's hear. And I should switch on here my generator. Oh, no problem. Uh, let's go down to minus 50. And we can still hear it. And remember, we are already in the 2 meter uh, area, right? And uh, that means um, a lot of uh, older uh, uh, tracers are giving up because uh, they cannot handle it and even uh, my modern uh, digital one you may have seen it in one uh, of my earlier videos is simply not able uh, to pick um, uh, uh, 145 megahertz with minus 50 dBm no way but this one is doing it okay now Let's try uh, what I really can't believe if, if uh, it would work. Uh, okay, AM and 50% and let's go up as well to, uh, let me start with minus 20. Let me switch it on and let's see. Oh, <laughs> come on. Are you kidding me? So that is working. So let's go down to minus 50 and yeah, and now, now it starts tr uh, struggling here. I mean, minus 50 on 430, so... <laughs> but minus 40 is uh, working here without uh, any problems. All right, so let's see. Yeah. You can hear it, 430 megahertz at minus 40 dBm, so that is awesome. That means it is easily possible uh, to uh, uh, trace signals in a 70 centimeter uh, transceiver without any problem. So this is so unbelievable sensitive and it is really a broadband um, unit so yeah you have seen it and that is what uh, i mean with uh, performance so that means i really can use this unit for uh, all the radios i'm uh, normally uh, working here on uh, in my in my lab without a problem and uh, you see this uh, 
Heathkit uh, models are really awesome and especially here the last uh, uh, tube edition so that is uh, definitely uh, the last uh, tube edition edition uh, we had a model T4 which uh, looks the same it's a little bit uh, different but uh, not much uh, circuit wise and uh, the IT12 is really the last version uh, with tubes and remember it is uh, important uh, to use a tube circuit because we have the high input impedance which we want uh, that uh, we really do not uh, load down uh, a signal with you know uh, a, a high impedance because that would uh, happen and uh, even with uh, my scope I'm uh, not really able to trace uh, down signals on uh, 430 megahertz and therefore I really uh, can say this uh, little restoration is uh, really a success I have here a unit which uh, is working like uh, new it is really sensitive uh, down to minus 55 dBm and uh, we can go up to uh, 430 megahertz uh, there we uh, have our limit at uh, minus uh, 40 dBm but hey so that uh, was not expected so uh, if you talk uh, to an old uh, radio uh, technician he would uh, tell you okay uh, 100 megahertz is maybe the maximum uh, what uh, this uh, tracers can handle but you see what uh, is possible and that uh, is really a nice addition here to my bench okay what uh, can I tell you more so this is really a nice uh, invest to uh, anybody's uh, bench so uh, if you come uh, if a unit like like this uh, uh, comes across your way just uh, grab it uh, maybe if it is uh, the T4 version you have to do a little bit more uh, restoration and uh, even uh, IT12 uh, which worked for 30 years then you have to expect uh, that you need to, to change your uh, capacitor your uh, electrolytic capacitors and maybe your tubes are worn out and uh, so on uh, so yeah uh, you you need to do a bit more restoration than I um, was uh, uh, needed to, to do here uh, on, on this unit but anyways um, if you find uh, IT12 then go for it it is really an excellent uh, tracer Okay, so though that's uh, it for today. Uh, I hope it was a little bit uh, interesting for you. Even uh, it was not a full restoration because we were lucky. And uh, therefore, yeah, if um, you like it, please uh, give me a big thumb up. And um, yeah, catch you next time. Bye.